The secret to releasing the driver properly in your golf game, to allow for more straighter, further golf shots, those draws that you've been looking for as opposed to seeing those slice shots, all lies upon a drill that I'm about to show you. So a couple of days ago, I had one of my clients come and see me for a lesson and they wanted to focus the entire lesson on the driver. And the main reason was they could feel that the iron shots, they were absolutely fine, hitting nice little fades, dead comfortably, no problem at all. But when it came to the driver, they were setting off on target and curving way off to the right, losing at least 30 yards of distance from this as well out on the golf course. So we had a look at his swing and we noticed one thing in particular in the downswing phase that was stopping him from being able to release the golf club properly. So when we swing to the top, Tom was lagging the club in the downswing really nicely in this position here and rotating through more efficiently, which is what we've been working on in the past. However, we noticed that the wrist was set in a very open position at this point and then from here to try and release the golf club, we were tilting backwards this way and then starting to flex this lead arm here. But because with the driver, it's a longer club, we're swinging faster, it's much harder to time this correctly and allow for that club face to close more efficiently. So in order for us to be able to get that release, that secret, that drill that I was mentioning earlier, we needed to allow for more what we call forearm rotation throughout the golf swing. So imagine if you're throwing a ball, a football or a rugby ball, if you load ready to throw this ball, you're not going to lean back this way, are you? You're going to sort of swing through this way. And you can see what it does to your forearms doing this. We sort of go from rotating this way to rotating this way as opposed to getting there and this way. And what that was causing was a very extended left wrist position. So when we extend the left wrist, it opens up the club face like this here. As we lean away, we flex this lead arm, causes that open face at impact. So what we did was we used something as simple as a table tennis racket. And what we did was we placed the table tennis racket in the palms of his hands like this here, just dead simple like this. And we were to set up in this position here as if we were to hit the golf ball, we'd swing up to the top, ensuring that our wrist angle, our hand and our arm are all in one nice straight line, which would indicate a very nice square club face at the top of the backswing. His grip was absolutely fine. So it was just really making sure that those three parts were all in sync flat at the top of the swing. Whereas we noticed this position here quite a lot. On the downswing, we had the tendency of going this way. So we get that extension in that left wrist going this way, and we see that lead arm flex like this here, so it starts to bend. So in order for us to stop this, we wanted to swing to here and feel the opposite motion of the downswing. Feel like that right palm is going to overtake the left palm on the way through like this here. Really pushing both of our hands out and round as far as we possibly can. Almost like a Tommy Fleetwood finish, but rather than trying to hold the face off, we're trying to get that trail hand, my right hand, to overtake. And you can see how extended my right arm is here, the trail arm. But also, we were really encouraging that lead arm to stay extended throughout impact and continue to stay extended to this position here, which is really forcing Tom to gather the feeling of what it felt like to have the arms are really nice and straight and getting that forearm rotation and improving that wrist position at impact in this position here, trying to get that right palm pointing towards the golf ball and all the way through to finish. So how do we replicate this to using a golf club? We've gone from using a table tennis bat or a book that you used at home to try and gather this feeling, but what happens if you're at the driving range trying to develop an understanding of what this feels like? Well, for me, when I'm doing that and what Tom felt like to him when he was doing it as well is he was really forcing this right palm here to overtake on the way through and extending both of those arms all the way through into this position here, which was allowing for that club face to rotate in the correct way, squaring the face up more often at impact and seeing more draw bias shots as opposed to them spraying way off to the right. So ensuring that those three angles there are all in line as opposed to seeing that extended wrist position here and open up the face and from here we're feeling that right palm pointing more towards the golf ball as we rotate into the downswing and then we're extending both arms on the way through and allowing that right hand to overtake the left. So allowing the trail hand to overtake the lead hand. <laughs> So there you go, more of a draw bias golf shot. 
This is great for increasing the distance, the height, the strike, and lowering that spin rate for you so you can see more consistent, straighter tee shots. So go ahead, give us a try and comment down below what you would like to see next.